welcome to Chris Grocery. Hey everybody, welcome back. Another live stream coming at you. It's been a minute. It's been uh, over a month, I think. Since our three month, two, three months since our last live stream. It's been quite some time, yeah. It wasn't music based. Yeah. We're going to talk about art again. Back yeah. to art. The exhibitions in the newly remodeled space. I know everybody's wondering what does the space look like and what does the art look like inside. Yeah. Have a chance to find out. Yeah, let's go inside. Come on in. We're going to disregard the uh, sign here. That's right. Because we're on the television of the internet. Yeah. So, yeah, Shane just said this is the work of Emily Davidson, which you will see in a second. And we're going to start with Brian Keith Scott's new work right here, because we still have some sunlight. Yeah. And it really looks best when there's some natural light on it. Yeah, I'm loving these new Brian Keith Scott's. So pretty much what we've had here at Kirk's um, are his totems, which we'll look at in a little bit. Um, they're made out of aluminum, uh, which he melts down, melts down himself, uh, and glass. And then this is also some steel he's, on, he's used in this work. Most of his work is steel, aluminum, and glass. Um, but these are the first wall pieces we've had in here, and I'm really impressed with them. I just love them. I, uh, I love the texture of the steel itself, how it's been battered. And he, he actually told me, you know, he, he, dis he distressed it himself, but then he left the steel outside just to, you know, get some elements on it. But then after that, you know, he coats it with some sort of varnish or something. And a lot of people who buy Brian Keith Scott's work, they'll put it outside. Yep. And then we've had a couple people talking about this work. And, you know, you're thinking maybe this wouldn't go outside. It's a wall piece. But a lot of people have those outdoor kitchens and really interesting setups to their yard. And yeah. so this can be outside. There was just in here, uh, someone was in here talking to him the other day and he brought that up, you know, how it might be nice to put these outside, you know, as like a, as a guard. Oh. Or, no, that's not called a guard, what is that? It's not a, it's a fence, but you know, where they just put up, not all the way down. It creates its own space Barrier, yeah. space, yeah. Yeah, and I just love these pieces. This one here uh, is called, In Answer to Your Query, Yes, Yes I Do which I love this title. Uh, it actually fooled me when I was uh, typing out all the titles into the computer. It was the last one, and when I read it, I was like, what query did he ask me? And then I realized it was actually the title of the piece. And funny thing, the next day, Mary was reading the same thing, and she said, did you answer his question? And I said, no, no, that's the name of the piece. So this funny little joke made it th through both of us. Yeah, it's good stuff. And we got this great new lighting here at Kirk, so we're getting much better light. I don't know if you've watched our live streams before or have been in here, but we have some track lighting now. Yep. Very exciting. These pieces are four grand. I don't know if I mentioned that. These next two, which is a pretty good deal for Brian Keith Scott's work, he, especially at this size. He is uh, represented uh, over at the Yam. He's in the permanent collection. You can see some of his public artwork over there as well as in front of Rock Creek Roasters yeah, right downtown under Sky Point. He sells a lot of artwork in Jackson Hole. He has a, a good following, yeah. Yeah. Brian Key Scott's a real treasure here uh, here in Billings. He's been doing this a long time. Um, he's done a lot of creative things over the years. He's going a way treasure back. treasure state treasure is what we like to call him sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Cool. Want to move on? We're going to go, we're going to just Let's keep moving along. Come around and take a look at his work. And yeah, as you, as you come around, you can kind of see that these, these small pieces that are embedded are reminiscent of what the type of work that we often have at Kirk's by Brian Keith Scott. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that what happens is that when he's casting, he's using cardboard. Is that right? Yep. He, ca he builds those out of cardboard, the originals. He considers these the duplicates. Um, the original gets destroyed when he pours the molten aluminum onto it and it burns up in the process. Um, yeah, so these are just little molds somehow he makes in the ground. Um, these are made out of cardboard, big, hot, hot, that molten aluminum, box. Yeah. burns it up. And I love that. It leaves these awesome lines, kind of like drips on a painting, um, you know, very imprecise part of the process, uh, turns into the final product. And the uh, cracks in the glass. Um, and then like you said, this, this larger piece of, I think this is steel back yep, here, right? This is steel, yep. And that he's done a lot to treat it deliberately, but then he just puts it out in nature. And then again, there's an unexpected element um, 
he seems like he's really interested in control and letting go of all that control at the same time. Yeah, for sure. It's beautiful work. I, I really love this. And I've been making jokes that I, I ripped up the carpet so I could have the floor match his pieces. Oh, it I, does. Think, it I think the floor matches. is a real nice complement to his pieces. So if you are looking for some artwork in your home, yeah. we could install both these. We could rip up the whole floor. Yeah. Bring that, reinstall yeah. a new floor or for you too. Or if your home so already floor... has a floor like this, it's perfect match. Yeah, yeah. perfect Don't match. Don't put the 4,000 into the floor. <laughs> put it into the wall. Yeah. And what's this one called? This is called Sexy Economy by Brian Keith Scott. I love his titles. I, don't, I, th I actually, when I had the th th these three, we have three pieces of these. Uh, I thought Sexy Economy would have been the one with only one of these squares on it, which we don't have out here, but actually that one was called Meditations. So, sexy economy with the three. Sexy economy, yeah. I mean, yeah. we often think of economics as sexy, so it's a whole, whole nother level. Oh, yeah. I know I got numbers in my pants and I need to dance. Wow, yeah. <laughs> now we're on a roll. We're getting back into the old vibe, yeah. <laughs> Let's get some jokes going like yeah. the old days, those the old are, days. Those are the old days. Our jokes. live stream chops are down. We're bringing you know. them back. We're, yeah, we're, we're almost back. Yeah. All right, here we go. So typically, well, I'm um, going to throw a little light behind that these one. These are the totems oh, maybe you um, come around here that, we, that light we've had by Brian Keith Scott before, but with a different, um, a really different color to the glass, I feel like, more of a kind of a Caribbean sea. Oh, thanks for throwing some extra light on there, Shane. Um, when you have Brian Keith Scott's work and it's near a window, as the day goes on and the light changes, it really changes the way the work looks. So we've got a little daylight and now we're putting that artificial light back there. I can't see it, is it working? And you can see mm -hmm. all the, it definitely is working for my eyes. Um, and so I am going to just say yes, it's probably working for our friends. Somebody just gave us a cool hang loose uh, hand gesture from their truck. Thanks for that. Nice. Somebody might have seen that in the background. I sure love the blue in this one. It's so solid. You know, sometimes his work, you know, it's cloudy or it's got other colors mixed in. But this, I don't even know what color blue this is. Aqua? I think it's, it's I don't know. Between swimming pool and beautiful Caribbean um, seaside, I would say. Yeah. Now, once again, these are made out of aluminum. And, you know, the originals were made out of cardboard, as we talked about before. And then he inlays the glass, and holds it in place with these bolts and these pieces of steel. And we're gonna, and let's come over to this one more, because right I think this here. one really benefits me. Mm. It's got some depth in there with other colors. It's got that solid dark chunk, which I feel like I haven't really seen before. And Brian's work is just so beautiful. I would love to see it in your house that you're in right now watching us or, yes. in, your, or in your yard. Yeah, these are so beautiful in the way he polished them down. And then when it's so unique. I mean, Brian, I, I, you know, it's, artists are so interesting how they just find this path, you know. And I really haven't seen another artist that focuses so much on, like, these totems or what? Yeah. Oh, no, I was just oh. helping you come around the bend, you know, I'm getting our chops back. back. Over here. Yeah. Go back yeah, to the... Yeah, that he's, like, focused so much on casting in the ground, the cardboard, the glass. And this totem-like shape that he sh you see over and over again. Yeah. And that's his passion. Looks carbonated. There's so many little bubbles up in here. And carbonated glass. Yeah. Yeah, and I believe when you buy a piece like this and you do put it in your yard, it's going to look very different five years from now than it will today. Yeah. And that's part of the beauty of it. You get to watch it. You get to see that process continue. And change, grow. Yeah. Right. Great. I think we're ready to move on. To we're the moving second on. Artist. We're gonna. We're not. We're it's not gonna belabor any of these points. You know, just Venmo your four grand, drop yeah. it in the mail. We'll send. We'll Venmo. roll this over later tonight, everybody. Yeah. Whoop! We got a kid with the bike. He'll deliver it. Yeah, we do. Eight grand. You can get those two big ones on the wall. <laughs> okay, let's go down the trail that is Emily Davidson's artwork. Oh, let's do it. Yeah. Let's come on over here. This is going to be real, yeah. real great. Oh, so yeah. one of the things that, one of my favorite sections of any of Emily's paintings is in 
this piece. This is just the front piece. When you walk in the front of the gallery, it's called Unrequited. I love this piece up here so much. These ribbon colors, ribbons swirl. You know, they make your eye just bounce back and forth with these delicate curves, these nice curves. They intertwine, intertwine, kind of braid in there. And then these beautiful little birds, very springy. You know, we're in spring right now. Unrequited. Unrequited. And Emily Davidson is very strongly influenced by surrealism. Yeah. But I think the influence of surrealism on her work is very specific to her vision as an artist. And often when you look at, at skin or at faces, you can see that there's a transparency in her work lately. Mm -hmm. And within that, um, I think pos almost every piece over a certain size that we have right now includes the constellations. Yeah, that seems to be part of Somewhere. her, something she's trying to, uh, brand is such a hard word, but um, you know, that she, a motif, Strong she continually theme. brings in, uh, you know, I always kind of see a lot of magic in her work, a lot of spirituality in her work. Um, and, you know, the constellations is just another facet of that, yeah. how you have, uh, you know, whether it be through astrology or just the wonderment of the universe or space, you know, whatever you want to look at that. I love that she brings that in. Like, this is such a deep space blue here. Um, you've got these beautiful robin eggs. Yeah. She does nice with this lace, too, you know. I really yeah, like she's that. a very masterful painter. Yeah, and she... I think she's constantly training herself. Um, just to become stronger and stronger yeah. at her technique. And I think for really specific purposes, she knows the type of things she likes to paint. Mm -hmm. She's getting better at that type of surface. Um, and she's always been great and she just keeps upping her game. Yeah, this, this is a really strong piece. Uh, I just, you know, I kind of get to decide where everything goes and I was like, well, this one gets to go in the front door. This one, goes <laughs> this one is the greeting piece. You know, you want that piece that just kind of brings people in has people having a blast. Um, and I felt this was just a good, strong, solid front piece. Plus it's a good size for this yeah. wall. This makes me think of, uh, remember that Paradise California fire? Uh -huh. Always makes me think of that. Yeah, it, it is very like, this is a fire back here. Even though it doesn't look like fire, it's the colors behind the green. And these. And these, these circles of smoke, that's what it looks like to me, maybe yeah. not to others. Um, and just this, um, this incredibly hopeful um, image of spring yeah. with those spring-like colors like robin egg, robin's eggs against the background of, of flames, of smoke, yeah. if that's what it is. That's something it makes me think of every time. Yeah, nice well, choice for that front piece. Hey, well, let's move around to this. Chooser. This is a pretty cool thing. So while we were talking about Emily Davidson and we were getting her art in here and I, we had decided to have her during this March show, um, Anna Page uh, and a couple other people in town, Sarah Moyer, had started this program uh, called Eat, Share, Give, where there's community refrigerators. Oh, you got them right there here. There we go. I got their, their postcards right there. Right here. Ooh, we'd like to see that. We're going to come in on the QR code, all you people at home, see oh, if you can take a photo yeah. of your computer and see if the QR code will oh. go all the way through there. Yeah. <laughs> Make it meta. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, so this is all happening while I'm booking this show. She's dealing with Anna Page and Sarah Moyer, each share give, and they come up and they wrap this, this uh, refrigerator here, which they asked if they could put in Kirk's Grocery, which is now filled Wednesday through Saturday, 1 to 7, our open hours, with food. Mm -hmm. um, and today, mainly it's fruit and stuff, but we've had a lot of local restaurants donate food, uh, the Petroleum Club, Evergreen Cafe, uh, Chalet Market, um, as well as Eat, Share, Give has been donated food from food suppliers. They make sandwiches, they make soups, yeah. they bring it here, they just put it here. You're welcome to come, whether you're the richest doctor in town and you just need lunch and you're driving by, come grab a free sandwich. Or if you're a homeless person out here and you just need a drink of water or something, just come on in. We are ready to support you with the pangs in your midsection. Whatever what is, that what is the price for every single piece of food they offer? Oh, everything here is free. You know, I mean, we will take your donations, but it's not part of the deal. It's not, it's, it's not part of the deal. It's just part of just everybody at some point can be hungry or can need something a little more nutritious than maybe what they have on them. Yeah. And Eat, Share, Give is just a free program. Yeah. They're, opening in a, they're also opening a pay-what-you-want restaurant in the old Commons building, which I guess would be 4th and 30th or so in downtown Billings. And uh, that's going to be a pay what you want restaurant. So it'll be interesting to see when that comes out. Anyway, Sarah and Anna and the whole 
uh, each share give team very looking forward to making our community better just like which is what Kirk's is trying to do you know just give people here in Billings uh, opportunity to experience an even better life than we already experienced living in the treasure state in the treasured town of Billings. And Emily Davidson's art is part of the branding for each share give that's why they wrap this refrigerator with it kind of on all sides. Yeah and they Emily didn't do the bottom or the back. Oh uh, well next time Next time, so the people installing it can see that back image better. Oh, you know what though? Yeah, let's just show, let's show it in action. Oh yeah. Mm, man, I'm thirsty. Oh, what should nice I have? job. Yeah. I'm gonna Good have choice. a blueberry and pomegranate. Aha. Or you think it's aha? I think it's aha, like the band. The band. Yep, okay. I think it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me know your uh, take on that. Ha. <laughs> Cracking myself up on that one. That was a good one. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's good. You want to sing? Yeah. So should we look at the original work yeah. that ended up being part of this refrigerator for each share give? Yeah, so it stands over here focusing on that. We have the same paintings over here. Now, these we didn't offer up for sale here at this art show. Um, these, were all, these are all going to go into the restaurant over there on 30th and 4th. Um, and so we're just showing them. They are the artwork that went on the fridge, as we yeah. said earlier. And they're all deities, or, you know, sharing their bounty. Mm -hmm. Here we have Odysseia, which I believe is the Greek goddess of bounty and food. Um, With the food at her feet and in her, in the kind of the folds of her dress. Yeah, I, I actually like how this is really painted right here. Yeah. How it, you know, it's also a little sexual too, you know, with the... Yeah, mm -hmm. food is sexual too. And we just saw sex in the economy, so there's a lot of through lines there. I'm, I'm feeling sexy in my oyster shirt. It, absolutely, I'm sure yeah. you are, yeah. Yeah. I'll let you read that. There you go. And then next up after Odysseus, we have Osiris. Osiris. It's interesting that Osiris, uh, of these images, is sort of the, uh, I don't know, the wheat. You know, it makes me think of the staple. It also makes me think of a video game I played in elementary school where Osiris would come out and... That was the end. He showed up and killed you. But in this context, he is about nourishing others, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. I, I haven't talked so. to him. Let's. I, yeah, nourishing others. He told me. Is that what he said? Yeah. yeah those yeah. are the words of Osiris That's coming to said. you right here from Kirk's Grocery. And then that same style with Emily Davidson. I feel like she really has a great sense of using alternative colors, especially for flesh. Yeah. You know, just, just since you've been along with us, you've seen a lot of beautiful blues and greens um, that she really captures as a flesh. Why color. do you think she does that? I'm going to ask you. You don't know, but I'm asking why. Why, I mean, do, why do you think instead of painting an actual flesh color, what would be the purpose of painting a well, flesh a different color? I think that, I mean, you've said, and I agree with you, that a lot of Emily Davidson's work has an element of either um, the magical or the metaphysical or the, um, you know, referencing, um, you know, Greek and Roman myths. Mm -hmm. um, so things go beyond the world of uh, hard realities. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like these skin tones kind of summon up that kind of yeah. magical world, you know, the sky reflected in our flesh. And one thing I find interesting, you know, if you're a painter and, or any sort of artist and you come up with, uh, shtick's not the word, but you come up with a technique, mm -hmm. you know, like style. Le, a style. Like if you're a guitar player and you're always using tremolo, you know, you can overuse that tremolo if you use it constantly. If you're playing distortion all the time. Um, and what I find interesting is about this constellation thing is she used it just sparingly enough. Absolutely. Like I, I feel it's something that could be overplayed. Um, it could be put in too much, you know, and it's like, oh, it's another constellation painting. Um, but she uses it kind of to outline and just draw all these real weird uh, angles. And yeah. they're, they're, it's nice, it's sparse, that it's not overwhelming. And it's like the constellation, of the constellations themselves. You know, there are always some stars or planets that you look for <coughs> in the sky, and you have to put your eye off to the side. You don't look directly at them, and then they just kind of come into view. And I feel like that's true with a lot of Emily's work. You walk up and, you know, maybe first you see the figure or the sky or the background, um, but then slowly these constellations emerge. Um, One thing I didn't notice until just now is they all kind of have this similar up, up top. I didn't notice there was like a sun or a 
you know, planet or a moon up here obscured by clouds. Oh, this one looks like a delicious navel orange. Hey. Um, yeah. So what do we got here? Plum. Everyone's up for citrus. Plum. Navel orange, plum, and do it, Shane. Uh, Nail that last acai. one. Acai. An acai. A lime. A lime. A lime. Oh, that's a good one. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, so these paintings, as we talked about, they've all gone already. They're all we actually just have a few of Emily's paintings left to uh, sell. We've had, she's had a good show. Yeah. Um, we've, we've sold. A lot of fans of her work. A lot of them. Yeah. She had a whole series that she's just started that has little skeletons in them. We'll see them here in a sec. And I think that was a, another, a that was a hot seller. Yeah. People were really excited for the skeletons yeah. and fruit. Yeah, fruit and Death berries and life. with skeletons. I think that's always a hit. Yeah. Yeah. And this one, I mean. I love this piece. I really I, yeah, love I, piece. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. A great story that happened at our art opening. Um, one of the first people that came in, uh, he's a local photographer. Peter Herzog is his name. Hmm. And he, uh, maybe in 2012, Emily Davidson had did some street art here in town. And uh, she had painted a figure on something downtown. And this guy had taken a picture of it back then. And he had it printed out and he had it framed. And then at the opening night, this is like, you know, eight years ago, seven years ago. Opening night last Friday, he showed up and he brought her, hey, i bringing you this photo of this painting that you oh, did that no longer nice. exists, like from 2012. And he was a really cool guy. And I thought that was, you know, art just reaches all of us in different places. And the great thing about street art is it's out there reaching everybody. And just something that maybe she threw off. I don't know the history of that piece she made. But, um, you know, it's disappeared. But because of this photographer, it lives again. And lives forever. It's documented. But this one's called Ascension of Fish. And, you know, this is probably the most Montana of the group, you know, um, with that fish. Don't you think so? The I mean, Ascension I think, of the Fish. Yeah, they're definitely Montana. I mean, I've seen this animals. happen out at the Stillwater River. You know, those eagles oh. just drop down, grab those fish. Yeah. And up in the air, you know, we got the constellation of the fish again. Yeah. Pisces, I guess. I don't know. What I love about this fish, though, is there's something around the head. Oh, yeah. And it could, be, it could be like a halo. It could be something completely different. Kind of looks like if you're watching a comic or a you know, cartoon and the, somebody yells and it's like, Bleh! and it's like the visual look yeah. of sound. Yeah, there's a graphic look to it. Yeah. And it draws you in. And, I mean, it, it definitely lets you know, or it makes me think in the ascension of the fish that the protagonist is the fish. Even though the fish is the victim, the fish seems to be the victor, you know? Mm -hmm. That look on the fish's face. Um, yeah, you know, the bird just is, uh, doesn't have much character. You're right. The it's kind of like... owns the, the piece. Yeah, right? I mean, it is painted way looser, uh, not as much detail. It's almost, yeah, it is not The eyes are empty. And this is so loose. These wings aren't even yeah. finished up here. That's very... But yeah, everything on the fish is finished. That's a great thing about painting, you know? I, you know, it's like when you're looking in real life, when you take your eye and you look at an object, you know, things are fuzzed out to the other sides. Um, and it's, uh, paintings are just like that. You know, you have, this is really the, the focal point and she just fuzzes this out as it gets away, yeah. you know, and it's and not as go important. In the background, it's, it's more impressionistic and it's, it's less um, tight. And, and yeah, she does have these same circles that are, we can see through yeah, all these, and which we also see in this there. first piece, too. Yeah, right? but over here, you know, to me, it doesn't evoke smoke at all. A in fact, I'm not quite sure what it does evoke. It's right here on this line where um, the sky seems to shift into this... Magical um, realms. Magic magical realm. Magical space. realm. Yeah, astrological, astronomical realm. Yeah. So yeah, everybody, Ascension of the Fish, $350. Mm. I'm gonna just gonna look at our. Uh, oh, let's see. Let's just see if we oh, get any. Oh, we don't have any. anybody chit chatting with us. You can chit chat with us. We are chit chatters. Yeah. Oh, let's see. All right. Oh wow, we're we're getting close captioned again. I always like. Yeah, it we're getting close captioned. captioned. We have a lot to say, and we want everyone to see it. Uh, I'm just and trying to find it. out. You keep talking. I'm just trying to find out if talking. the. Let's. I'm I'm a big fan of this piece. Um, kind of for personal reasons, and I was telling a friend of mine about this piece. And how it reminds me of somebody that I once knew, and he said it's a girl making an escape on the slowest possible animal she could find. <laughs> and I think that that's really interesting about this piece. 
But I love it because the alligator's carrying this purse, you know. So a lot of Emily's work is definitely more narrative or than Brian's work. Um, and, you know, this, the purse in the mouth just makes me think of alligator skin bags, you know. Oh, wow. So it's like yeah. a whole play for me on, like, you know, maybe he is saving her, but he's also, you know, carrying her bag, which, you know, maybe it's human. Oh, wow. I See, know. and I just thought of it in a surrealist way, just a pairing with an object you wouldn't expect to be there. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I get the alligator bag. No, I think there. the alligator bag is strong, yeah. And this one, uh... This is LB's favorite of the evening. LB always comes out for one piece. And he's, oh, he's really excited. He's sneezing it up about this piece. It's not just me. LB loves it, too. Wow, what a stretch. He's such a good boy. <laughs> he just gets better and better for the fans of Kirk's who are also fans of LB. What a good puppy. <laughs> like his big starring moment. Usually he just lays down. Right on, pups. LB loves Emily Davidson, too. Yeah, and so this one here is called Gentle Gator. It's 16 by 20. It's 475. Now, one thing I haven't pu pumped at all is our website, uh, kirksgrocery.com. Oh, yeah. All the artwork you see here at Kirk's Grocery, uh, well, actually, Emily's isn't all up there, but if you go oh. to our website, there's a whole lot of artwork up there. Ascension of Fish is up there right now. You could just get online right now, kirksgrocery.com. You could buy this. I can ship it to you. We have shipping rates and everything. Yeah. Um, let's move on. Gentle Gator down to this sold From one. The Gentle Gator down to this sold piece. Totally different scenario here. Now, I love this piece. I love the colors of it. I love all this intricate, uh, what is that, maybe starfish or coral? Just yeah, I feel like um, coral or maybe not an anemone. But, you know, you have the deep sea aquatic creatures, and then when you look more closely at these sort of bubbles, you know, then they're no longer aquatic creatures. They're more like embryos or, um, I don't know, to me that kind of metaphysical image of a human being, you know, of the, the child inside us all. Yeah. And I love how she juxtaposes it with this, this interesting lobster here that is its own constellation. I'm not aware if there is a lobster constellation, but... I love the way she uh, especially uses sort of the front part of the lobster to map out the stars there. And she's using sort of the same color for the water that we see her use for flesh in that a lot is, of the yeah, images. Yeah, it's, it's the same as the, uh, oh, the Japanese one here, yeah. ukimochi. Yeah. And she really is great at mastering color. Like you'll see brush strokes where Emily just puts one color right next to another. And I feel like not only is she mixing colors, but she kind of knows a bit about the physics of our eyes and how when we get a little farther back, there'll be those reactions from color to color. Well, you know, though we did install new lights here with this bright light that our gaffer is using tonight. Yes. Um, I hadn't really noticed this lobster down here. I, I kind of just had lost that in those bubbles and everything. Oh, I, wow. I, that just popped out when that light hit that. Oh, it's fun. That lobster always kinds of, kind of commands my attention. Oh, really? Piece. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. This was a great piece this sold opening night. Yeah. Oh, are we coming in here? We're coming in. We're we coming got, in here. We I got a few more pieces left. this chair, yeah. yeah. I'm so a big fan of this piece. Um, I think overall this is my favorite piece of Emily's in this show. Um, there's something graphic about it that I love. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of reminds me of skateboard decks from like the 80s and 90s, Ooh. you know? I, it's some graphics like that. Um, it's just a solid painting. I think it's a composition. Compositionally, it's really strong. And you know me, I'm always a big fan of lines that are curly, if you've ever seen my <laughs> artwork. Well, I like how it's Medusa remembering Athena. And when I first looked at this piece, I didn't see Medusa's green face back there. Uh. Um, and her green hands are also back there. Um, and that's something I like, that it just took a, you know, 10 seconds or so, and then Medusa sort of emerged out of the composition for me. And again, like, you can see how Emily puts brush strokes one right next to the other in ways that really makes the color pop. Yeah. And it's ways that are pretty inorganic, they're but they're totally, it's totally successful. I mean, you just want to stare at it all day, at this combination of colors. It is very strange colors sometimes. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, the, like we talked about the face, like all the folds in that dress, there's blues right next to yellows, yeah. um, pinks. You know, she's really just using all these colors. I love this piece. 
It's, it's real good. I could see it like on a pinball machine <laughs> or some, like skateboard or some surfboard or something. Yeah. It's very, it's graphic. It's more graphic than most of her work. Yeah. And then the background I think is very different for her, you know. Solid. Solid, um, just a basic organic brown. I haven't yeah. seen her use much, but she uses really well there. And this last piece here on this wall, Ooh, this, for whatever like reason, this. this reminds me like it should be a Funkadelic or a Parliament album cover or something. Oh, yeah. It's very, uh, I don't know, it just kind of reminds me. Oh, what was the artist that did all those? I mean, I he always used markers, but. I don't know. You know, I have like my super geeky side. It makes me think of the TV show uh, Legion, you know. Just, you know, a lot of those shows with strange, surreal elements and people walking around in the desert for bizarre reasons. And I love how those birds have sort of a smoke to them. But then as they go farther into the distance, it almost looks like that's their shadow as well. Yeah. She plays a lot of tricks on the eyes there. And, you know, that child that the person is carrying is really hard to see. I mean, you really have to kind of get in there and have a gaffer with a light on there. Uh, no, I'm, you're doing it. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> I just loved that I found out what the word actually Shane's meant. Shane's a taskmaster. Uh, yeah. It's, um, it it's kind of hard to see until you get a lot of light on there. I mean, which has been a problem at Kirk's is we haven't had great lighting, but I love it's this. This piece anymore. is real strong, too. These last two. I love the calmness of the backgrounds, you know. Mm. A lot of her backgrounds have a little more uh, going on, so your eyes dart around a lot more. I like mm -hmm. I like pieces that have a little bit more negative space and open space where your eyes can rest. Well, in this one, your eye darts around within the two figures. That's where she keeps your eyes moving. And I always keep looking at it thinking she's used a silver paint, like with a metallic, uh -huh. but she hasn't. You know, um, the highlights are just plain white. Yeah. Um, she's just using black and white, and she's using it just to incredible effect. And that one's called Lament. It's 475. And it can be yours. It has not been sold. It has not been sold. No. Let's introduce our crew tonight. Yeah. Who's that guy? And there we got Mr. Ty Herman. Ty Herman. All around lover, uh, just wonderful person. Yep. We have uh, our executive producer is uh, Stan. Oh, that's our executive producer, definitely. He, he keeps us in line, on track, and high tech. Getting better. I'm Shane DeLeon, one of the runners of Kirk's Grocery, and we're so happy you're here with us tonight. Over here we have Tori. She's a wonderful person. She's got a bright light. <laughs> and of course, Mary Serby. Right. I'm also one of the runners of Kirk's Grocery and yeah, uh, yeah all around uh, personality in the region. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to just go to these last two paintings that come down this wall. Yeah. Well, we can do the little ones too or just these big ones? Oh, I forgot about them. I guess oh. we'll do those okay, next. So we'll do these two. I forgot about the four. We have six paintings left. Walk around this dog laying on the floor. I love this piece. Um, it really speaks to me and it's more like your work. Yeah. I mean your work has a lot of or some of your older work has a lot more chaos in it, you know, with these colors kind of ch -ch -ch -ch, and you know. Well, I like the fact that it's called two dogs. And the two dogs are dogs. Um, you would think that there would be these, you know, maybe two poodles next to each other, or these two highly realistic or highly stylized dogs, but you got yeah. a regal one and a drug addict. You I got mean, like which just, one's the drug addict? I mean, it could uh, be I'm going to go with dogs. this one here. This one's having a little problem with tramadol over here. I would here. say this one's not regal. That's true. This one's pretty regal. It almost looks like a lion. Yeah, or a bear. It looked a little bit like a bear to me as well. Yep. Yeah. She told me this was a commission that she made for someone and then it just didn't um, follow through. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so uh, that's interesting. But I do know that about it. It's got a different, it's different than all, everything else in here. I mean, it was hard to, it was so different than her other work that I needed to find a place to put it that wasn't right next to it, I felt. Yeah. It, did, it didn't really go along that wall, you know? Yeah, and I think that both of these pieces in this corner, they both have this same kind of really rough, raw frame. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the, the brushwork, I mean, a lot of her work, even though you can see the brush smooth. strokes, it's very smooth. Very worked um, out. And here, you know, you can see it's scrubbed a little, or you can see the layers just coming through. And the energy of, like, the way she's moving her hands more frenetic, yeah. I feel like. You know, she's kind of, she's really putting it down in a way where she's just getting it on there. Um, yeah, in a really different way of layering. And so this two dogs, two dogs is a thousand dollars. Someone had commissioned it 
somehow lost their chance. But if you have two dogs, or even if you have no dogs, you could now also you could have enjoy dogs. this. Yeah, you could have dogs. You maybe your apartment, your apartment doesn't let you have dogs. Yeah, maybe Here's you Here's a way you can get away with having two dogs in your house. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons people don't have dogs. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Allergies. Their cat doesn't your allergic want them kid to get this any. thing. Yeah. So are we going to look at this hot seller that's yeah. already gone, Skeletons in the Raspberries? So this one would have sold three times opening night. Uh, three different people wanted it. We sold it to the first person. And then just yesterday, I love this question. Does the red dot mean it's sold? And I said yes. So we could have sold this again yesterday. The red too. dot always means it's sold. Yep. Uh, and I love that this seems to be a new series she's working on. We have the one more over here, Skeletons in the Lemons. This one is called Skeletons in the Raspberries. And I think it's she's just putting little skeletons in different fruit yeah. fields. And it is painted different than the other ones. I really like this. It gives it this uh, uh, impressionistic, you know, all these little pointillistic mm -hmm. kind of, you know, the way yeah. she did the leaves on everything, um, the way she did the raspberries, how she only gave uh, really, uh, man, my brain is. Oh, okay. So, well, she's got the raspberries and she only gave, you know, so many. Uh, focus, focus, what we were talking about earlier oh, over okay. here, how the raspberries are super in focus, mm. you know, then you get, I don't know. Well, I love that she's getting out the teeny tiny brush, right? And the teeny tiny brush is usually more challenging. Yeah. Um, I mean, this skeleton was made with a teeny tiny brush. I mean, yeah. And because she's such a talented painter who's able to capture, you know, imagery that she wants to convey, I feel like she can grab that teeny tiny brush and create skeletons that almost, some of them are almost invisible until you walk up close yeah. and start investigating it. Because you could think that that's a little bit of, you know, cobweb or something else in there when you look at the, the berries up top. I kind of hope, you know, uh, this is the afterlife, I hope. You know, we just get to be oh. little skeletons in fruit fields. Well, that's Because they're having a blast. Look at these little guys. This guy's like lounging. This guy's like partying. He's like a little pirate. This guy's going on a climbing adventure. Maybe that's why people continue to try to buy it over and over again. Maybe they want to live that life. Yeah. yeah. Okay, We're so going to come out to the front. Back around. Gonna... We've got LB on the floor in our way. He loves to do that at Kirk's Grocery. Look at that puppy. He's such a good boy. Who's a good pup? <laughs> He's so good. LB oh, pups. Wow. This is his most photogenic moment of the entire time we've known him. He's getting better with the camera. It's probably the skills of, uh, of Sam Parker. So here we have the other no one. longer berries, but fruit. Skeletons in the lemons. Skeletons in the lemons. Yeah, I love this one. This is super great. I put this, this was the picture I used on Instagram today, and we got a few comments on it. Someone asked, you know, if it, would, if it was sold. We could have sold this one, I feel, today again, too. So Emily, if you're out there, you're watching this, you know, it seems the Skeletons Fruit Series. It's a hot seller. Might bring in some ducats well, look for at you. the sky, too. I love that blue that yeah. kind of comes through like a ribbon near the bottom, but up a little bit from the edge. Oh, right here? Yeah, that blue there. You know, that's more of like a kind of quintessential blue sky. And mm -hmm. then she's got that misty, foamy blue. Um, and it just makes everything pop in the lemon trees. And again, the skeletons are so tiny that you've got to come in and really take a good look at them and see how much fun they're having in the lemon tree. How much fun they're having. Yeah. Oh, and this piece here. I Extinction feel like. Extinction is trending with Harimbe. I always think of this as Harimbe. <laughs> this guy back in here, he's Every coming time back. Every time I look at this piece, I find something that I never saw before, right? I mean, yeah. there was a point where when I saw um, the gorilla there, I mean, I was like, oh my God, there's a gorilla in that painting. I like, think I we were doing so a live times. stream, whatever, six, we eight were. months ago when we had this. This is a piece that's been around Kirk's for about a year. She dropped this off. Yeah. Um, usually her work sells pretty quick. For whatever reason, this one's just kind of hung around. I know. It's $150 called Extinction is Trending right here tonight on the live stream. I'm going to throw it out there, 125 what? Can we get 125? 125? I got 125 125 But you don't just get a gorilla. What else do you get? You, you get, get a rhino. You get a rhino and some constellations. I'll even throw in a, Rola de Ro a Rolodex. A Rolex. Shane's throwing in a Rolodex. <laughs> and a Rolex. And I love the fact that, you know, there's some anthropomorphism here, too, because... You know, it's a woman, but then the more closely you look at it, especially the stripes. Yeah, the tiger stripes um, kind of or something like that. She has that look of like a feline look to her. And yeah, everything, the pocket watch. I feel like it takes time for this piece to really sink in. And then if you start thinking about 
is she trying to say something with all this symbolism? Then I feel like you just go on this journey in your mind. Yeah, you could go so many places. I don't even places. go that deep. I, I, I don't have that much time. I got to work tomorrow. Wow. Um, I love this hat right here. Oh, it's I just love pitch the hat. black, and it's like her head is actually in space. But just because she puts this yep. line in here, we know it's a hat. Like with that, it just looks like her head's in space. Yeah. She's and a great painter. She's got great technique. One thing we don't know. Do, do you know what school she went to here in town? Anybody? No, she did. She partly grew up here, right? Was it? And then in the Michigan? magazine, she said she grew up in Detroit and then she moved yeah. here. But oh, yeah, yeah. I thought she said she went to school here. But oh. Okay. She didn't give me the answer. In well, the interview. if anybody she just knows, said. they can type it in the chat. Um, Emily. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Detroit first. She's in Costa Rica right now, though. I just saw. Yeah, she's in Costa Rica right now, perhaps being inspired by the animals and the wildlife there. Yeah, probably. Um, I would imagine she's going to paint a monkey. And I'd love to see that. Wow. Well, we got just yeah. a couple pieces left. These are the all sold. Ones. They sold opening night. Yeah. Uh, this is Pineapple Man. One, probably because it's a man. And two, there's a pineapple in it. Yeah. Pineapple now, if she could have she could have called it Pineapple Man with ferns, and it would have been a really... You know, I just personally find him to be a pineapple <laughs> vampire man. That's that's always how I think of him. Um, well, do you think that? But, but it's not blood. That's it. like juice. That's, that's yeah. That's if juice. you were a pineapple vampire, that would be the blood of the pineapple. Um, but I mean, that's just how I'm thinking about that one. But yeah, pineapple man. I love his hair. This is a great face. I think this is a really, really good portrait. Um, there's just something about it. You know, she is using more skin tones that are natural, even though he's got a lot of gray in there. Um, I think it's a really nice but portrait. His me, eyes are his eyes are pretty, pretty jamming. He he's like someone from an old photo to me, though. Yeah. You know, born yeah. way way before any of us were ever born. Um, but then the pineapple has a life to it and a vitality to it, and then you know it often stands for hospitality. Um, so I feel like she does have a lot of. Wait wait wait. Do you think he lives in a pineapple under the sea? Because I, I mean, he's under a pineapple, and maybe those. <laughs> Sorry. I think you're really making some progress there, and I think if Emily were here right now, she'd be impressed. But I bet know, Emily likes SpongeBob. You Bob. deciphered it, yeah. I bet em I know Emily likes SpongeBob. There aren't a lot of people who dislike him, but I don't know. This there is the internet. There's probably some trolls in there right now. Let's look at this last one. Ooh. But I know I look good next to this Brian Key Scott. Hey, let's oh, do, let's do yeah. a Run DMC kind of next to this. Should we like? Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Brian Keith Scott. This is how good your work would look at Kirk's Grocery. We'll sing hard times because we're hard. Yeah, and if you buy this for your own home, you could also pose in front of this in the same way anytime you want. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then, we, yeah, we got two more because we got this oh, little Brian Key Scott we got to look about, too. All right, where are we going first? Let's go here. Let's go. Look out, children. Okay. Look so out, So this, this is obviously a reference to William Tell I'd or say. something in there um, yeah. with the apple on the head. But there's two arrows. Yeah, two arrows. Hmm, look out, children. Look out. And, what, I, and it's red on this kid's forehead. Like it's. Mm. Well, and to me, the hair looks like a wig. You know? Yeah. I feel like the hair sits in a certain way. Um, is this a Sia video? Is it a Sia video? I think you're really nailing all of her references. Um, I mean, I think that's how you get to be a gallerist. You just understand people's uh, messages really well. I, I, I feel out of, we were doing these so often, we had like a real nice rapport. I'm, I'm, I'm wow, and you just talk about that in the past completely. Yeah. We no, we're doing good rapport. tonight. I mean, we are doing good tonight. I'm just saying, we're, we're, we're the best. We're the best. Yeah, we're, we're the, the best. best. Yeah, we we're are. The best. Yeah. Um, but this is, I love we this We didn't painting. actually really <laughs> speak about this. Stan's like, we are we going to? We just about ourselves being the best, but this is another one where she's used these gray tones. But still, she's got the vibrant colors in there as well. And then I think. Um, but the apple is, I mean, the, his, the red on his forehead is redder than anything on the apple. Mm -hmm. I want to know why his forehead's red. Well, I mean, someone did just um, have a bow and arrow and shoot directly at this child's head. So that could cause some agitation. He doesn't look like he's worried about it. No, or is traumatized and like in shock. Yeah. It's hard to know. I love these pieces because we've talked about it a million times. I love spacious backgrounds i love a lot of yes. white i love i love negative space and this is so painterly all these grays and these oh, whites just they're painter. just they lay so nicely i all mean right. this one i mean it kind of she paints like an oil painter in a way not that that's but yeah I, I know what you mean yeah not not that there's a huge difference you can see but i mean sometimes acrylic paint is more layered and this is so 
model. Yeah, sometimes. It's very model. So this kid is staring into bright light because they got those catch oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Look out, children. It's got Look the out, yeah. It's like a big light and a small light. Uh-huh. All right, I'm going to get out of this tiny corner because we have a tiny piece of art that demands attention. I think I'm going to pick it up. You're going to get in there? Oh, you're just going to pick it up. Go for it. Hold it. I love this piece. It is extremely heavy. I don't know extremely, but I mean, it's a, it's made out of aluminum and it is so brushed and so fine and so gorgeous and has such weight. And then it has just this little glass on top, like a little, like a snail. This kind of reminds me of a snail over here, or just a big dollop of paint. Um, well, and then over here on this side, if you turn it, there's a little bit of a swirl to it. I mean, maybe that's why you say a snail or a snail shell. Yeah, this right here kind of reminds me of a snail. Yeah. And just the... Oh, you're going to have to... This is so tactile. Hold it. Hold it. Oh. I mean, it's very... This is, yeah, it is. It is very tactile. You want to hold it and just like... It's true. Now that I have it in my hands, I also want to stare deep into it. Yeah. And I love, you know, Brian's work often is metal and glass, mm -hmm. but... I haven't seen work of his that's anything like this, where no. it's such a um, condensed space. Um, you know, usually he has sort of that almost two-dimensional use of space for his three-dimensional work, mm -hmm. but this is more of a solid chunk. And uh, but the glass, as always in his work, really catches the light, and so does this brushed aluminum right here too. What's the name of this one, Shane? Uh, the name of this piece is Flow. Flow. Flow like Florence or flow like uh, flowing Flow through? like um, those hippie people that do the flow dancing? Or they're not even hippie, like, you know, modern primitives, whatever you call them. Yeah. Yep. That's it. It's called flow. Yeah. Like that guy. Flow state. You know, yep. I'm in a flow state. I'm yep. in a total flow, flow state, state. Yeah. bro. And how much is it, bro? Um, this is $200. $200. And there aren't many Brian Keith Scott pieces. This is an extremely price unique range, piece. Period. It's $200. Most Brian's are in the thousands of dollars and it's just really unique for him oh it really is it's yeah. and this piece of metal i wish you could all come down to kirk's and hold it and a lot of times you can't touch art you come down to kirk's i'm gonna let you touch this i'm gonna let you hold this yeah. this is a very one of those pieces of art you want to hold and touch and it's been a stressful year a lot of us have stressful jobs if you had that in your office you could just hold it in your hand stare and look into the light and let it just balance you out it has a lot of magical properties let's Let's stand here and give a, a lead out. I'd like to stand. Sure, we can do a lead out. Or whatever you call that, a fade out. Yeah, a lead out, a fade out lead out. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Ready? I am. Well, once again, thanks to Stan and Tori and Ty oh, for yeah. coming That's in here. Group. And, uh, you know, we've over the last year, <laughs> it's been a year, we've been uh, doing these live streams and uh, they've been really fun. We've shown you a lot of art, we've made some sales. Um, we've had some laughs and I really appreciate you guys sticking with us uh, through the whole year, continuing to come back. Uh, things are loosening up. Uh, I know I've uh, we've had more people getting vaccines. We got all sorts of things happening. So make sure you come down to Kirk's. Um, check out this stuff live. Don't forget our Eat, Share, Give refrigerator. Um, LB's doing great. Thanks to LB for all his help with this live stream. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and once again, you can check out a lot of artwork, um, a lot of music. A lot of old videos. Um, we've been just really working on our website. Uh, so please go to kirksgrocery.com, click around, spend some time, spend some money. Um, we're here in Billings. We want to continue to just keep doing artistic things. And if you're out in the community and you have ideas or you have uh, something you want to pitch our way, please do. You know, we are approachable. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody out there in Facebook land. Or YouTube land when we put this on YouTube. Well, let me just give it. Uh, April 2nd is going to be the open next show. Oh, yeah. And that's going to be. Uh, right. Todd Forsgren. There you go. Todd Forsgren and Leah Tanari from Brooklyn. Or not from Brooklyn, from New York City. And uh, Todd, Todd Forsgren, Forsgren, who lives here now. He's a professor up at Rocky. We're going to have his photographs. Uh, he works with scientists uh, catching birds in nets. And so a lot of the pictures will be birds caught in nets that are then safely released. And uh, Leah Tanari has some gouaches. And that opens here April 2nd. I believe around April 19th is the next time we're doing a live stream. And we will be talking about Todd Forsgren's work.
So check us out on the website. You can find all the real dates so you don't have to rely on my memory. Yeah. 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 And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Uh, there is, uh, you, you can donate to us if you like this. Venmo at Kirk's Grocery. PayPal, Kirk's Grocery at gmail.com. Cash app. And you can Kirk's leave Grocery. money in an envelope in the mailbox outside the door. Sometimes people do that. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yep. Anything works. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Adios.